So if you have been using statically typed language like Java or Kotlin, probably you have heard of solid principles. Now let's discuss each in more detail. Now let's start with the single responsibility principle. So what is single responsibility principle? This principle states that a class should have only one reason to change. In simpler terms, a class should have a single responsibility or job. It should do one thing and do it well. So for example, here we have Uncle Bob's car. The engine's job is to provide power, the wheels are for moving, and the brakes are for stopping, and not otherwise else. But with SRP violations, Uncle Junior made his car steering wheel also control the brakes, which will be confusing and challenging to maintain, and probably did on his first trip. Now let's look at a simple coding example here. So for example, here we have two functions. We have start and accelerate and brake and switch off. So as you can see here, this code directly violates the SRP principle because these two functions are going to be doing almost four actions. So how can you maintain, for example, the start code? So you're going to mess up with the accelerate code also. So this code here is actually violating SRP principle. So how can we fix this SRP violation? So the first case here, we can introduce a data class that is going to hold up the information about a particular car. And for this case, we can perform different functions by using different uh, the classes. So for example, here we have created a class for car braking and also a class for accelerating. And these are going to be doing one thing and they are doing it well. And if we want to add another functionality, we can easily just add another class that is going to be uh, changing that particular functionality. Okay, now let's speak about open closed principle or OCP. So this principle suggests that software entities, classes or modules or functions will be open for extension but closed for modification. So what do we mean open for extension and closed for modification? So when you want to add new functionality, you should be able to do so without altering the existing code. You achieve this through techniques like inheritance, interfaces or abstractions. So for this case, if we have a working class or a working function, we don't want to touch that function when we are adding another functionality. So for this case, we can easily solve this problem by using inheritance or interfaces or abstractions. So it promotes code reuse and minimizes the risk of introducing bugs when making changes. Let's look here at a simple example of OCP violation. So for example, Uncle Junior's car went designed to accommodate the new technology. So to install the GPS, he had to tear apart all the car components, including the engine, transmission, and even the seats. So as you can see here, we have a simple technology that we want to install, but we have to tear down everything that is already in place just to install it. So this is directly violation of OCP. But let's look at a simple example of non-violation. So Uncle Bob car was designed with the extension in mind, added the GPS functionality which slipped into the car system as mostly as the hot knife through a butter. Not a single engine or seat was harmed in the process though. So as you can see, when you design for modify, when you design for extension, that you mean you can easily insert another thing or another functionality inside your code. Let's look here at a simple code example that violates OCP. So for example, here we have a typical enum classes or we have, for example, a true or false or uh, something that is similar to this one. So for example, here we want to calculate the arrival time. Okay, let's look here at a typical example. So as you can see, we have here a class that is going to calculate the arrival time. And this one here depends on two uh, constants here. So if the car type is going to be premium, so we want to return 30 minutes. Or if it's basic, it's going to return one hour. So as you can see here, this class here is going to be really difficult to maintain as whenever we change here, these car types here, or we increase, for example, if we want to add the Premier Pro Max, a, a car that takes only 10 minutes to go to the destination, this is going to be a problem because we want to modify again this calculate arrival time basically here and we can easily break other logic. So here we have used just a simple example. You could have thousands of lines of code that depends on this function here. So how can we fix this? Basically, we can use the interface to add the new functionality. So for example, we can introduce an interface for GPS that calculates the arrival time and we get in the destination. So for this case, we can easily solve the problem by using this. So we can create another class and here we use the SRP to help us also to achieve this uh, functionality. 
So we have a basic GPS that is going to take us one hour to arrive at the destination. And also we have the premium GPS that takes in 30 minutes. So if we want also to add, for example, the premium pro uh, max GPS, then we can easily add it here that takes in only uh, 10 minutes. So for this case, we can create a basic car and also a premium car that does not depend directly on this particular uh, implementation of the GPS. So we can easily swap in, for example, this car model to a different one here and OCP is happy. Okay, let's look at list of substitution principle. So it states that objects of a superclass should be replaceable with objects of a subclass without affecting the correctness of the program. In other words, if a class is a subtype of another class, it should be able to be used interchangeably with its parent class without causing any issues or uh, causing any f uh, functionality breaks. So for example, here you have a convertible car. So if you can drive this convertible car here, then you can also drive a minivan car because all of these are just a base model of a car. And we know that every car has, for example, a transmission and also have an engine. So you will be able to uh, control this type of cars. Okay, let's look here at a code example. So for example, here we have an abstract class that is called vehicle that has several abstract functions, for example, starting, accelerating and braking. Now let's look here at a simple LSP violation here. So this car here is going to inherit from the vehicle and basically it has all of these functions here. So it has all of these functions here. So start engine, accelerate and also black. But also we have a base code that inherits from a vehicle also, but also it's going to get a method here to start the engine. And basically this one is going to throw a runtime exception. So basically this does not fill in the boots of this vehicle class here. So for example, this cannot be substituted to its parent class because it returns a runtime exceptions that no engines for bicycles. So for this case, we can easily fix the problem here and not violate LSAP by using, for example, here, we want to take here the abstract vehicle and have the functions of accelerate and brake and other functionality if you want to add them. And also we create an interface that is the vehicle with the engines because for example, we cannot create another abstract class because a class cannot inherit from two. So basically we have to create another interface and basically a class can inherit from more than one interface. So this interface here has two functions, the start engine and stop engine. So for this case, this car is going to inherit from the vehicle and also the vehicle with the engine and basically get the method for starting and stopping the engine. However, here inside our class bicycle, we are going just to inherit from the vehicle and get the methods that are supposed to be inherited from uh, the vehicle class. Okay, now let's look at another principle, which is just interface segregation principles. So this principle emphasizes that clients should not be forced to depend on interfaces they don't use. So in simpler terms, it's like say, don't make a class do things it doesn't need to do. So let's look here at a simple SLRP violation. So Uncle Junior here, I think his car is a transformer that can be a plane and have all the cool buttons and switches. And it's probably going to be dead again here because as you can see here, the dashboard is full of things which you are not going to be using them and probably it's going to be confusing you and hell, you are going to create a mess in your code. Okay, now let's look here at the code example. So for example, here we have an interface that has a function for starting, accelerating and brake and flying. So as previously, we had the problem with this vehicle class here. And similarly, here we have a vehicle that is going to be inherited, but now we have an interface that is going to be inherited from a car class. But again here, this function here, we are not going to be using it because our car cannot fly as Uncle Bob's imaginations. So for this case, this method here is going to be useless and we cannot use it and cause mess inside our car, inside our application. So how can we fix this problem? So for here, we can just segregate the interface. So basically we just create each functions with its own interface. So for example, here we have a fly that has a fly function, accelerate engine start and break. And basically a class now can depend on a certain interface, which it actually needs. So for example, here we can have accelerate engine start and break and basically implement those method. So for this case, as you can see now, our plane class here can evenly just use this fly here because the car doesn't need an interface for flying. So for this case, 
uh, our car class does not depend on methods or things that it actually doesn't need. Now next here we have the dependency inversion principle DIP. So this principle encourages high level modules to depend on abstractions, interfaces or abstract class rather than concrete implementation of a particular class. So it also suggests that low level modules should depend on the same abstractions, making the system more flexible and easier to modify. So as you can see here, the low level modules uh, should depend on the same abstractions to make the system more flexible and easy to modify. So it promotes decoupling between different parts of the code base, making it easier to swap out the components or extend the functionality. So you can see here Uncle Junior rewires his whole car when all he wanted to do was to change a headlamp. Well, his car is tightly coupled. Let's look here at a code example when we are violating the IP. So we have here an engine that is going to have a function that is starting a fuel. And basically inside here a class, we create a function, a variable that is called the engine. And this engine here is going to be starting here. So whenever we change this class here, because this is just a concrete implementation, then we have also to change this code here. And basically this violates uh, dependency inversion principle. And this directly depends on a concrete uh, implementation of this particular engine. So what if we want to swap up with this particular car here to have, for example, an electric car. Because here, it's basically starting a fuel engine. Basically, then again, we have to change this class. And it's going to be a mess when managing our application. So how can we fix this? Basically, we can create an interface that is just going to start the engine. Now we can create concrete implementation that implement this particular engine here. So we have the fuel engine and also the electric engine. And basically we can use composition or just the dependency pass directly to this car here as a constructor. So here we pass in a private file, the engine, and then we pass in electric engine, for example, as a default uh, engine. And basically we can start the engine. Now, if we want to swap up with a different engine, for example, if we have a magnetic engine, that is probably we are going to be using it on Mars, then we can easily start the engine again.